These are what they call Ketha, Chakma, Baina. This does not exist on all of what you see. If you were to go back to the first template, you would not have seen that, where they got Darth Vader from. Hesed, Gugra, Tibar, Nesha, Hulu, Yasud, Malkut. These names are not names, they're formulas of light and sound. Formulas of consciousness. Next. Each one of them means something. Ketha means the source. Chakra means wisdom. Bainu means understanding. Shesa means mercy. Gura means power. Tiparath means beauty. Nessa means Nessa means victory. Hold means glory. Yasud means foundation. Malkuth means the kingdom. Look where they put the kingdom. Look very carefully at what I've just showed you. Check the schematics and we're going to catch up with that in a minute. Go right ahead. The first tree of the ten Sephiroth means ten. Each one of the Sephiroth are harmonically amp amplified by nine. There is no ten. Ten is actually a duplication of the one on the physical realm. So, whenever you are speaking about the exponential progression of life into the crystallation, the crystalline properties of movement and form, you are looking at it by exponential levels of nine. So, the first tree is ten Sephiroth. But harmonically uh, exacerbated by 9, the second tree becomes 19. But then it becomes 19, and then becomes 20. Again, the third one goes by another 19, it goes to 28. It goes to 37. It goes to 46. It goes to 55. It keeps going back to what? Yes, because there is no other number past that. Everything exponentially is represented by the harmonic outgrowth of that one root seed. Go. Now listen, in the sixth tree you see an equivalent of 55. Not only does this number add up to 10, but when the numbers 1 through 10 are added together, they total 55. So thus you can't go farther than that. Next. This is the exponential progression of the Sephirothic tree. What does it look like? It looks like the macrocosmic snowflake. So everything that you could study that has a geometric form to it, from the blood cell all the way out to the snowflake, all the way out to planets, all the way out to gods, all of them have their root in this symbolism. <coughs> Next. The 22 Aleph, Aleph Beta of the Tevaroth. Next. Listen carefully. Look well at these symbols. Do not think they're Jewish. Get away from the Jewish bullshit. <laughs> they are not Jewish. This is the Aburu. This is the language that the ancient Kemetic priests, when they were being chased out by the Hyksos, they began to quickly say, what do we do with all this knowledge? In their supreme brilliance, they put everything in accordance with coded language that you have to elevate in consciousness to come to the understanding of. So until this devil came to a point where he could understand what the hell was going on, he was not going to unlock the code. But it passed on down. He was trained in the inner temples and it leaked out. And that's why we in the shit we into today. Because we gave it to an immature motherfucker. So now, when you start seeing these, all these are phosgene patterns taken by the brain in higher thought patterns. And they have become a language. They're not only the phosgene imprints of thought patterns, next. They're also the star configurations around your head. Look, this is the astral alphabet. This is the constellations that it's akin to. Here you have the specific constellation that they are connected to. And here you have the Hebrew alphabet. Wow. <laughs> Notice, brothers and sisters, that the language of light and the Hebrew alphabet, you're looking at flames. If you were to take a candle and light a match, and watch a flame dance back and forth, 
you are watching the language of fire speak to you. Well, all light, all language is based on light. And what's the best evidence or physical evidence of light? Fire. So fire is essentially, these are the kumadu of the fire language that our ancestors created in order to encode the millions of years of information that they had. They had to make it in coordination with your own mind, your own brain work patterns. Next. So what are we looking at? We are looking at the Sephiroth as the audio spectral geometric template of universal existence. Next. And they repeat in a cycle and exist in 300 and, and 231 gates and it comes to pass that all that is formed and all that is spoken emanates from a single name, the Sefer Yisrael. This is what they hid from you. This is what they hide from Christians when they say in the beginning was the word. You think some, some jackass named John said that. John didn't ever exist. John is a formula. John is a formula because there was no J's back then. It's I-O-N, which is an ion, so it was the atom speaking to you, fools! <laughs> Next. Here is the three, 231 gates by which light code transmissions take into manifestation. From this particular wheel that you see, these encoded scriptures right here, there are 231 gates connecting everything to the center. The center emanates outward and then emanates back to itself through your thinking patterns. Yes. Next. The four cycles of the three 231 gates. The first cycle is absolute emanation. 182 gates of creation, 50 gates of understanding. The second cycle, briar or creation. The 238 gates of, 31 gates of creation. The first cycle, yet sir, formation. The 231 gates of initiation. This is why I started here. <coughs> so you can understand the world of form before I even get to beginning the world of creation and emanation. Before you can even understand that, the fourth cycle, which is what you are coming from, is based upon redemption, the 50 gates of understanding and ascension, the 182 gates of Asiatic redemption. This is what we're doing in the last 20, 25 years. I was dealing with this level. Now I'm here, but I'm hoping that I'm around long enough to get you here and there. Next, very quickly. Here you have a schematic showing you the different patterns that light takes. Everything is a schematic of light and sound. And the angles of creation are right there in front of you. Patterns where you can definitely form things out of nothing. Because everything that you want to exist already exists. You have to form the template by your mind. And when your mind forms the template, the sound begins to fill out the template. And when you understand how your thought process and everything else works, you will begin to understand that everything, everything is based upon these schematics.